What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? That was a weak clap. There we go, that was much better. Today, we have the Canik SFX Mete series. We're gonna compare it to the Glock 34 Gen 5 MOS. This is a Glock 34 Gen 4, not an MOS, but let's use our imagination and pretend that it's a Gen 5 MOS, not Glock's fault, that I couldn't get my hands on one, but I am very familiar with the Gen 5 in MOS. Now my comparison videos are some of my most watched videos and most commented videos, but also the videos that have the most ridiculous comments. This is just for fun. This is just my opinion, and if you disagree, it's A-OK, -okay. let me know in the comments, but don't be a dick. The Glock 34 was loaned to me by my friends at the Elite Indoor Gun Range. It's my local gun tree club. I love them, they support the channel. Awesome. Canik was given to me the SFX and the SFT as in part of the early review program before it came out. Canik gave both of them to me free of charge. Just so you know, I will not let this that, let that affect this review at all, but I wanted to let you know. That starting with the magazines, the Glock comes with three 17 round magazines. Glock magazines are typically very, very reliable. The Canik comes with an 18 round magazine and a second 21, 20 round magazine. Well, eight, and it's, they're both the same magazine, just has a plus two base extension. So which one do you prefer? The third magazine of the Glock or this one that has more capacity? On one hand, you can add a base pad to the Glock. Uh, with the Canik, you can easily get a third magazine. So which one is more important is up to you. Uh, magazine well, the Canik factory mag well is definitely better than the Glock. It's uh, more mag well-ish. <laughs> it also comes with this nice metal mag well if you want something even more, even more extreme. Mag well is very, very good. And the transition from the mag well to the pistol is excellent. The Glock is not bad at all. It has a little bit of a mag well. And obviously the big advantage with the Glock is gonna be the aftermarket support. You can get tons of aftermarket accessories for them, but it does not come with it. So again, you make up your mind which one is more important to you. Why I have the Glock in my hand, let's talk about the grip. Anyone who has felt a Glock knows the grips are all the same. They're not bad, they're fine. I do prefer the Gen 5 over these Gen 4 grips. The Gen 4 here has the finger grooves, the Gen 5 does not. So I prefer no finger grooves, even though these never bothered me. And the texture is okay, it's not bad. It's those little squares on uh, the sides, the front, the rear. They're fine, you have a couple different back straps from different size hands. It is what it is. Now the Canik, in my opinion, definitely has a much better grip. I like the texture a lot more. I like the shape and the angle of the grip as well. Glock fanboys, man, that Glock hump. I've never enjoyed it. I, I have to shoot, I have to try twice as hard to shoot half as well as some of the other guns. So the Canik, in my opinion, has a much better grip, a much better angle, a much much better texture. Everything about the Canik is, is better when it comes to the grip, in my opinion. Uh, it also does come with a few different back straps, just so you know. Now the trigger is not even close. I think even the biggest Glock fanboy would say the Canik has a much better trigger out of the box. Uh, Canik, all of the Canics have really, really good triggers. The take up, the break, the, the best part is the reset. Canik reset, absolutely nailed. Glock, you need to take a page from Canik <laughs> and uh, do something about your triggers. Uh, the Gen 5s are better than the others, but they're not good. Now this particular one does have a Timney trigger in it. And I think, again, the Glock aftermarket support is great. You could put a real, this trigger is sensational. You could put a nice trigger in your Glock and it'd be a lot better, but out of the box, no doubt, the Canik trigger is significantly nicer. I'll move on up to the slide release. This, uh, <laughs> this Glock 34 has the extended slide release that I love. Very, very easy to reach that compared to the factory one. Uh, the Gen 5 is ambi, so lefties, righties, shooting off hand, whatever, you'll be good with that. So slide release is good on the uh, Glock. The Canik is extended, it pushes further back. It is ambi, it's the same size on both sides of the gun. Um, I like the Glock, as long as it's the Glock extended one. I like the Glock a little bit more. I'll give a small nod to the Glock on slide release, but the Canik is a very, very good slide release. I won't knock it at all. Now your rails. Both of the rails are very, very similar as far as what lights are gonna work for them. Uh, the Canik has a three cutout. Um, three cutouts on the rail. I've put mod light on here, Surefire, Streamlight, Inforce, Olight, a bunch of different lights, and I don't have any issues with one over the other. Get back on there. 
there we go. Uh, the Glock is a Glock universal rail, very, very standard, single cutout. Now the Gens 4 and earlier had a different size. That cutout on the rail was a different size than all of the other guns. Now the Gen 5 has the same size cutout. It's a 1913 size cutout, same spacing as all of the others. But again, every light I've ever tried on both of the guns fit, no problem. So I wouldn't worry about it. Taking them apart is very, very similar. Make sure the gun's unloaded. Uh, pull the trigger pointing it in a safe direction then you pull back slightly on the gun and then you pull down on the takedown levers and the slides come right off the um, recoil spring is captured barrels are high quality very very similar i don't see any different in the takedown or the internals nothing significant enough to report i think they're both pretty good now as far as the slide um, the material is very, very similar. The finish is very, very similar, but the serrations, uh, the Glock serrations are good. Um, not bad at all, but I think the Canik serrations are a little bit better, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit easy to control. Sights. We got a dog. Sorry, we're gonna dog the Glock again when it comes to sights. A lot of Glocks come with these plastic sights. Great, the 34 is adjustable, wonderful, but they're plastic sights and these are duty style pistols. They shouldn't come with plastic sights on a duty style pistol, in my opinion. Now you can get them now with metal sights and Ameriglow sights, which is great, but they should completely remove the plastic sights, in my opinion. Now the reason I think the Canik sights are better, the main reason, is they are metal sights. Uh, both of them have a ledge on the rear sight for one-handed manipulations. The Canik has two small white dots in the rear, one big white dot in the front, and I think they're just overall much better sights, especially because they are metal. As far as the optic system, the Canik, <laughs> the old Caniks could take a full-size optic, but you lost the rear sight. The new Canik, the Mete series, you don't lose the rear sight, which is great, but it only takes these really small micro-compact optics like Holosun 507K, this is a Shield RMSC. You can put the uh, RMRCC on here as well, but it's only the really small optics. And yes, I shoot with both eyes open, but I still think I'd like to have a bigger window. I just think it's easier to shoot and pick up the dot, especially if this is like a competition style gun, a range type gun. Most people aren't gonna carry a gun this size and I want that bigger optic. So the Glock Gen 5 MOS, it does take full size optics. So you buy the plate, whatever plate you want for whatever gun and you can run your RMR, your Holosun, whatever full size optic you want, you can run it on here. So I gotta give a uh, definite advantage to the Glock here. Time out on the video, I was just reviewing the footage and I completely skipped the magazine release. Man, what a rookie. The uh, Gen 5 Glock is a reversible mag release for you lefties and righties, and I think it's in a good spot, good shape, good texture, drops the magazines freely, no complaints there. The Canik is very good as well. Now the Canik is metal, and I think the texture is a little bit better on the Canik, but it is reversible, good shape, good texture, good location, drops the magazines freely, so as far as magazine releases, very, very similar. Maybe a small edge to the Canik for the better texture. Let's go back to the other part of the video. Anyway, as far as testing, I have shot both of these thousands and thousands of rounds, especially Glocks. I have tons of rounds through, rounds through Glocks. I used to shoot Glock exclusively before I figured out I shot other brands much better than Glocks. So I'm very, very familiar with them. I've shot them a bunch, including the Gen 5. Same thing with Canik. I've owned quite a few. This gun has thousands of rounds on it, and I'm very, very familiar with them. I've shot them, sorry about the wind, shot them indoors, shot them outdoors, low light. Drawing from the holster, you name it, I've carried them. I am very, very familiar with them. But I broke both of these out at the range today. I put a few hundred rounds through them. I uh, did some moving and shooting, shot, shot some steel, shot some foam dummies. Even though I'm very familiar with them, I wanted to make sure I had an up-to-date informed opinion and make sure my opinion didn't change on these guns and how they shoot. So, uh, shootability for me, I think the Canon shoots, Canic shoots significantly better than the Glock. The texture, the grip angle, the shape, just something about it. I know I've said in the past that I like the Glock 34 over the Canic SFX, but something about this gun, I don't know, I shot it better and I just enjoyed it. Uh, I do like the Glock 34. It's one of the few Glocks I actually like compared to some of the others. It's one of my favorites, but um, as far as which one I think shoots better, for me and my hands, I will go with the Canic. Now, as far as durability, I don't think 
the Canik is bad. I think it's still a very durable gun, but most people wouldn't argue that Glock makes one of the most durable and reliable pistols on the market. And that's one of the reasons it's used so, uh, so much overseas and in the States from different military and police departments. Very, very durable gun. Aftermarket support, there's no doubt from holsters to accessories to triggers to whatever else. I, for me, part of the Glock perfection is how you can customize it and set up your Glock however you want. It's kind of like buying a base AR-15 and then customizing it. Very, very similar idea with the Glock. Uh, as far as value, not even close here. The Canik is definitely going to give you a better value. What you get for the money, the Canik blows the Glock away. It's less expensive, it comes with more accessories. Uh, it's just value is, is spot is much, much better. Take a look at the dimensions and the price. I know I mentioned the price a few times, so let's take a look. Dimensions are very, very similar. Again, the price is where it, var it varies. Overall, I think they're both very, very good guns. Which one you go with is totally up to you, whichever one you think makes more sense for you. Um, I think if I had to pick one, I would pick the Canik. Again, I just shoot the Canik much better. So if you can get to the range, pick them up, see which one fits your hands better, even better if you could shoot them before you buy them and figure out which one you prefer, that's the best way. But um, if I had to take one, I'll take the Canik, I think. I can't believe I just said that. I'll take the Canik over the Glock. I think it just fits my hands better and it shoots better. Before you go, I will do this super quick. These are the companies who support me with affiliate links. They are great. Patreon supporters supply most of the ammo to this channel. They are also great. Start a second YouTube channel. <laughs> it's great. Short videos, 15 to 60 second videos if you want to check it out. We have Tiberius swag. That's not great. You'll look goofy, but you should grab some anyway. Um, if you want to know what reviews I'm working on right now in real time before they come out on YouTube, I am on Instagram and Facebook. Links are down there. More than anything else, thank you guys for watching. It is truly, truly appreciated. I hope you enjoy these quick, non-scripted type videos off the top of my head. They always make me nervous that I'm going to say something stupid, but it is what it is. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.